welcome back okay now let's talk about this one uh, europa league right arsenal and chelsea and some of the teams that have you know book sports in the knockout stage with games to spare yeah, yeah interesting uh the you know europa league is hotter uh this season because you have a lot of teams that should be playing in the main competition are in the Europa League. Let's give you some selected uh, results uh, in the Europa uh, League. Just after four matches, some teams have already qualified. But let's see the results that took them there. Then we will now talk about the teams uh, that have qualified. Bayer Leverkusen uh, defeated FC uh, Zurich, but both teams qualified. Uh, Dinamo Z uh, Zagreb uh, defeated uh, their opponents, Spartak uh, Spartak from Slovakia. You have uh, Arsenal playing a draw, uh, but it was enough for them. Uh, Apollon Dimasol uh, lost to Entrant Frankfurt and 2-3. Uh, you also have uh, Lazio uh, defeated Marseille. I usually have a soft spot for Marseille uh, because a lot of Africans, a lot of Nigerians have passed through Marseille, but of course they couldn't cut it. Uh, Bate Borisov lost to Chelsea, a uh, goal from Olivier Giroud. And of course, Chelsea are true as well. And of course, there was a price to pay for Arsenal uh, about that much later. But let's quickly show you, with two matches to spare, some teams have already qualified. So let's quickly uh, give that uh, to you. Uh, Cecilia, there you have it. Bale Vakuzi, yeah. SEC Rich, uh, Dinamo Zagreb, Arsenal, Edge Frankfurt, Lazio, and Chelsea. Yeah. No matter what happens, <laughs> these teams have qualified. Okay, they cannot use the academy boys to play the last two games and just rest the The only thing boys. at stake is whether or not they will be group leaders. But they have not. qualified. But that's it. So it's easy like that for Chelsea and of course for Arsenal. Arsenal may have been a goalless one, but they got the result they needed. For Chelsea, it was Olivier Giroud who got them, you know, that one. And of course, they were able to get it into the round of 32. Now for Arsenal... Um, it was uh, a missed feelings for them. Mm -hmm. Happy that they got into the knockout. Couldn't really and also, uh, having Danny Welbeck, he may be out for a long time. We're still waiting to see how long he'll be out for because of the injury he sustained during uh, that game. We just wish him quick recovery. That's it, because that's a player whenever he comes, or he may mm -hmm. not be, mm -hmm. you know, a starter, but anytime he an plays, an impact player. The yeah, impact. I mean, he's always very impactful. Okay, now let's go back to our. Look at stories now, right? Back yeah. to it. Uh, okay, now starting with um, the basketball, what went down, you know, on uh, Wednesday, where you have, you know, the players and the coaches, how they were able to put themselves together. All of a sudden, they wanted, they said, okay, come, the league is going to hold. And everyone had to quickly, you know, rally assemble. around, assemble, and try as much as possible to see if they can uh, really. Uh, win, but somehow First Bank, of course, the big team was the one who were able to win, and the new sensation MFM uh, got to the they got to this uh, semi-finals, but somehow Dolphins just won't let them be. It took them out. They played a the third place match. They lost that one, but it was uh, Customs who won the third place match. And after the game, I caught up with the coach and also one of the players talking about how they had to bring everybody together in a hurry. We brought them together in a hurry and quickly, you know, they had to, at least they got to this stage and they are happy about that. Let's get reaction from them now, talking about Coach Abdurrahman and also uh, one of the players there, just as talking about how they were able to get this done in a few weeks. It's ex exciting, you know, considering the fact that uh, a lot of things, you know, happened before we even came down here. First, we're not even sure if the league is going to hold, you know. And then uh, we, have, we were given a letter, you know, a week before the competition started, you know, so it we had a lot of challenges, you know, we couldn't really get the players to come around. Some are in school, some have to go for other tournaments, you know, and then the management, you know, coughing out the money for us to actually, you know, but eventually we were able to do all that and um, coming down here to Lagos and pick the third place is a great achievement. I think we have overachieved considering what we went through to come down here. This is not what we do, you know, basketball is a lot more exciting, it's much better organized, you know, I mean, whoever it is that's going to be, you know, doing it, you know, would have done it much better. But I think because of the circumstances that we all find ourselves in, that is why this was done in such a rush rush, you know, but I'm hoping that um, it's not going to be like that next season. I think we're going to have a much better season. First place, second place in a week. <laughs> it's not funny at all, you know, rushing everything. But our first group, at the end of the day, we're part of the meta table. We ladies, we usually play like three faces. We cannot play the finest. Um, 
and uh, the, the qualifiers and the finals in one week. Come on, it's not funny. How much are we taking home? But when you have those three phases, we we'll go here, we we'll play this phase. At least you know that uh, you have one or two teams. You go to second phase, then we we'll have the final eight. We we'll play more matches. Now we will have just six teams, which will play home and away. To me, it's not fun at present. This is we're not used to this. This is my tenth year in the league, so I don't like this. They should just do something better. I hope they can do something better. Next is, of course, the way by then all the all station will be settled and will have, you know, full league and not the bridge that they had at this year. Okay, from basketball now, let's talk about this one. National Sports Festival is just next month and the Unity Torch has been moving across states and is in Emo right now. But before we talk about this, Ben Alaya is in the studio. Uh, ben, uh, good morning. It's good to have you. Okay. Always a delight to be here and... Uh, I have stopped talking about CC, but talking seriously, um, it was an epoch-making event that a deputy governor of a state played in a league match, Bendel Insurance versus oh. Patan oh. FC, said, and, 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 and nobody, festival. nobody is talking about it. We will talk about it. You know, it's, no, it's not will. fair. We will. We will. If, 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 but let's do you start. think people if, actually wait, like wait, the idea? Me, we don't want me, to. Let me just make from. a minute of that. I want to make a minute of that. You know, it, it's not always time. It, it played for 10, 15 minutes, a deputy governor serving, and it was amazing that right honorable comrade Shaibu Philip played for such long. I'm not sure any. Deputy governor, any governor anywhere can play that long. All right. Okay. And that's, I, what I, 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 I want, that's what I want to start with. Okay. okay. You have Thank heard. you for that. Next ben, time we talk about insurance, right? Uh, Let's see if they can maybe, get once they get into that top there. flight. Once they get to that top flight, we'll, we'll see. see wait for happens. NNL to we sort all those them. things we'll out. We'll we'll Let's talk about the happens. National Sports Festival now. It's next month, and every state I know every state has been preparing, and of course. In a uh, emo, emo state, over yeah, in, yeah uh, you have the unity touch here. Just passing around, yeah. You know, this, this event always arouses Ben, arouses the sports festival. Uh, we've been to geo geopolitical zone. The other time it was North Central. This is the Southeast emo state. And when this happens, Ben, what it shows you is that there is no doubt anymore. That's Shola, Shola, Joa. There's no doubt it's going to happen, and we're very happy we are seeing this. Uh, the deputy governor was on hand. I mean, the commissioner of sports was on hand to, to receive it. Uh, a lot of dignitaries were there as well. But this shows us that the sports festival is going to happen, and we're happy about that. Absolutely happy. Me, uh, uh, I myself am also happy that it's been delayed. It's, it was supposed to hold in Calabar. It went to another state. It went. It. I mean, no state was ready because of funds paucity. Now, Abuja is going to host, and yeah. I think that. Uh, with uh, Abuja now hosting and the federal government taking charge and saying the sports festival is the grooming ground mm -hmm. where the Mary Onyalis, the Falila Tobunkoyas, the all the big stars were discovered. It is about time that. All right. Well, I think that is it. Yeah. Uh, ben, let's take some. Let's quickly take some reactions. Let's uh, listen to uh, the central figures in that event. Uh, talking about um, in, in Imo State, what to expect uh, from the sports festival. I want to thank you for coming to give us the June July today. We are assuring you that Imo will come first. It's a promise. Our people are working very hard to make sure they don't let us down. You know, um, Nigeria used to be. Um, a country that is so good in sports. But today, you know, it looks as if we are a football nation. We are not Brazil, but we want to be like Brazilians. But we should, you know, go back and the ones we know and we do well, you know, we should make sure that we are growing the younger ones there. All right, so uh, interesting that you had a commission, the state commission for youth and sports in Emo State. Uh, speaking, of, I have uh, Olivia gold medalist, uh, uh, Choma Ajuma, also bearing in mind talking about uh, all of that. All right, Cecilia, let's let's move on. It's settled now. 
is, is the sports festival is going to take place. Abuja has decided to bail out Nigeria, so uh, the dust has settled. Let's move on. Uh, yeah, let's talk sports about federations. Yes, funding in sports has been a big problem. Well, the Minister of Sports has decided to take the step further to set up a seven-man committee mm -hmm. to actually see how they can, you know, source for funds. I mean, just come up with a blueprint of how they can continue to do this because it's becoming a problem right now. Every federation is going for different international events. It's all about the fact that they don't have the funds. And, and that's the why ministry have, is getting the blame all the time. Of course, that's why you have the <laughs> Super Falcons, for instance, don't have the kids to travel and all that because they're stuck somewhere and they don't have money to collect it. Okay, now this is the sports uh, uh, federations uh, funding committee. You have seven-man committee, seven -man committee seven yeah, by, uh, uh, Daniel Gali is the president, Restory Federation of Nigeria, Margaret being a president, Taekwondo Federation, of course, Frank Obi also president, Badminton Federation, mm -hmm. Ibrahim Guzo, president, Athletic Federation of Nigeria. I mean, these are corporates. I mean, this at AFN, number one, no funds. Then you have a Yahya Mohammed, president, Weightlifting Federation. It's actually an honorable. Uh, you have Slema Kondo also. Uh, from Nigerian Football Federation was picked there. Of course, uh, Simon Ogba representing Nigerian Olympic Committee is one of the vice president there. So these are the uh, men, I mean, the big men, top men set up to actually look into look how into yeah. they can, you know, actually help. You no know, help. They need to submit their reports quickly and see how we can, you know, appropriate for funding once I think this architecture is a good idea. for sport federations. Yes, if you ask me on what the sports federation should do, I think that they should try to live outside the sports ministry. That okay. is my thinking. Go to the um, corporate world, look for money, and say, if the corporations or the people say, I need my person to monitor how you spend your yeah, funds. Yeah, be transparent. That is it. So This, this is what we are doing. I, this I is our program. Every federation can fund itself. But every federation, apart from... Uh, the um, National Sports, uh, National Institute of Sports, and then the Nigerian Football Association, as it stands, there is no one that is registered, and so it is difficult. Even the MBBF cannot. So the ministry hamstring and twist them, and and so we must. If we want to register them, can we properly register them so that they can also seek public funds? Can, you know, this is what we are not doing, and yeah. people are not talking about it. And it, it is a media thing, I think. All the federation, apart from these two that I have mentioned, are not registered. So anytime the minister wants, he can strangulate you. And so people struggle into the federation presidency or chairmanship or whatever it is that is headship, and they don't even know what is happening there. They think that it is government money to be taken. And you have to f work for your money. I agree with you. I agree with you, Ben. It's really most of them are not doing. We hope that this community they have been set up would be able to, you know, map out that uh, kind of a roadmap. map. I must be honest with you. There are people who are working. The Squash Federation president is working. Obi of the Badminton Federation is working. That, yes. and, and several people are working. And, 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 and they want to make... But can we just incorporate them? Yes, just help them with this and see how they can free themselves uh, of the shackles. I know what I'm saying. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Okay.